Uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, to this series of uh, electrical ASICs power systems and uh, machines uh, exam question and again this time also I'd like to uh, solve some theoretical questions that repeated in almost every exam so today I pick two questions from the uh, three-phase system from the loads uh, perspective so let's see the questions the first question says here that that large utility customers so industrial loads for example with the low power factor often pay a penalty for it why is that so we need first to understand why we will have a low power factor and the best way to explain this is using the power triangle so if i have this power triangle and i will leave basically a, a, a link in the video description that talks more about the power triangle so this is your p this is your q and this is your s and this is the power factor angle now if i use or consume the same p so the power p doesn't change at all i will have exactly the same p but i'm consuming much more q so the q increases significantly here and this will be the power triangle and this is your s and this is your theta and you notice that theta increased theta increased it means that the power factor decrease so this will lead us to this understanding that if i have a low power factor it means I have a high consumption of Q while B stays the same, nothing has changed. Now, why we will have high consumption of Q? The high consumption of Q is due to using inductive loads. And for large utility customers, which is basically uh, industrial customers mainly, it is mainly motors. So you will use a lot of motors so these motors consumes a lot of reactive power. Now, what is the reactive power? Again, I will leave a link for you for more details to answer this question. But in the simple language, the reactive power is the power that you consume in the machine in the form of a magnetic field. So it's a loss in the machine, but without this magnetic field, you will not be able to run the machine. So motors transformers for example in the transformer to transfer the energy from basically the primary in this side to the secondary in the other side you have to have the flux without the flux that is basically uh, used or it's basically consumed by the core material you won't be able to transfer the energy that flux or this magnetic field is the reactive power so the more of you having these inductive loads, you need to produce, uh, consume more and more of this reactive power. Having this understanding, now why the utility penalize you for this? Because this is your utility and this is your load. So now you are consuming, let's say, P, the power that is the real power, the useful power, plus the, the Q. And the Q is very, very large. Now, this will make S. This is your S from the power triangle, P squared plus Q squared. Now, this S has to come from the, from the generator. So, they have to produce this S to you, which is huge part of it is the reactive power. It's not a useful power. But for to do that, they have to produce the power at the generator. The current that they produce will be very, very large current to accommodate for this reactive power, which will lead to high losses in the line. Because here, remember, this is basically a, an, a resistance in series with inductor as a model for the transmission line, a very high voltage drop. So it's really, really bad to consume reactive power. Now, how to solve this? You connect capacitor banks here at the load side and you force the usually the utilities force the big customer to maintain a power factor between 0.8 to 0.85 at their premises so it's the responsibility of the customer to maintain this and to install their 
they are uh, basically capacitor banks to to provide this reactive power again i will provide you another video about how the capacitor bank can be used if you are interested to get more information about this topic so that is basically why the utility company put a penalty when you have a low power factor now the second question is harmonics can be damaging to the power system in general give three causes of the harmonics and what is their potential effect on the power system so harmonics basically it we have for example in canada here we have the 60 hertz this is our fundamental frequency so if we are having only one frequency we will have something a pure sinusoidal but because the harmonics which is multiple of this could be basically even harmonics or more seriously odd harmonics now even harmonics means that we have 120 hertz so it's multiple of twos or odd harmonics which which is basically here uh, for the 60 hertz you will have the 180 hertz uh, for example so that is an odd uh, an odd uh, harmonics so we have even and odd harmonics this will result in a distortion of the waveform so this is a waveform that has some harmonics you can see here it's a distorted waveform now what caused this why the system doesn't give us only the fundamental now the fundamental basically if we have only linear loads, resistive or capacitors or inductive, but linear loads, then everything will be sinusoidal. But that's not the case. There are different causes for this harmonic. The first one uh, is the saturation in the transformer. Now, the transformer itself, because of the saturation of uh, basically the core, the core itself act like a nonlinear resistance in parallel with a nonlinear inductor. So it produces some harmonics. Now, when you have saturation, you produce more and more harmonics. Also, DC links, when you have a DC system, basically it goes from AC to DC back to AC system. So these DC links, and when you connect two power grids, you use also a DC link. There is an inverter there so basically those also produce harmonics but the most important cause of the harmonics is the nonlinear loads our loads are not, not anymore linear we have electron devices we have fluorescent lamps we have motor drives and so on and so forth so these types of loads are nonlinear and they will cause harmonics in the in the power system now how this will impact the power system there are couple of uh, issues i will talk some of them uh, i will not talk about uh, too many of them so the first one is mal operation of control devices and protection relay this is a highly severe uh, distorted current and you can have here what we call multi-zero crossing here so there are multi-zero crossing it's not just during the passing for the the period when you have such highly distorted current this will cause a man operation of control devices or protection uh, relays they will misunderstand the signal and hence they might open or close certain circuits that they are not supposed to do that another issue with harmonics and this is a very severe issue especially in current harmonics it will cause extra losses in capacitor transformers rotating machines because now the current is not anymore only the fundamental and it has harmonics and as per the IEEE standard C57110 it's mentioned in the standard that the winding eddy current loss in the transformers at the power frequency rating is proportional to the square of the current we know that the I square times R but also proportional to the square of the frequency so when you have higher frequency as I said 180 Hertz 300 hertz and so on and so forth now the uh, the amount of losses is more than if you just have the fundamental uh, frequency so that is another issue the third one and i will end up here is the possibility of the federal of a resonance to happen at this frequency now when you design a system the system of the power system is basically inductive for example, you have the overhead, the overhead lines or underground cables, and also uh, you have the capacitance of the 
of the capacitor bank. Also, the underground cables has its own capacitance. Uh, so yours and transformers are basically inductive. So you have a mix between transformers and capacitors that might lead to a resonance. If the inductive part from the capacitor matches the inductive part of the uh, of the uh, inductor, then you have a resonance which will lead to an overshoot in the current and in the voltage. So basically, when you design your system, you make sure that this doesn't happen. But when the people design especially old grids, they make sure that this never happened at the fundamental frequency. At the time, they don't anticipate free, uh, harmonics. But it has been reported that sometimes these multiple frequencies can resonate with the, uh, with the uh, network, causing an overvoltage. And there is one famous incidence in a substation between the US and Mexico where the cable termination failed. And they found that because of the uh, resonance that happened at a much higher frequency than the fundamental, and this frequency happened because of the, as, as I said, the drive system, nonlinear loads, and so on and so forth in the power system. So these are some of basically the causes of harmonics and their potential effect on the, on the power system.